Uh, I come at hepatitis C from two directions. First of all, I've been chairman of the Misuse of Drugs Group in Parliament for 10 years. Uh, I've just handed that chairmanship on. And as you can see from the first slide, I'm uh, presently uh, a vice chairman of the quite recently formed hepatology group in Parliament. Now, liver disease is the fifth uh, biggest killer in Britain today, and I am speaking from a British point of view, of course. Um, whereas deaths from cardiovascular disease, cancer, and the infectious diseases are going down quite significantly now due to the investment that our government have put in, sadly, deaths from liver di disease are spectacularly on the increase, and we have to do something about this. That's, what, that's why I gave uh, the title of my talk, uh, A Public Health Time Bomb, deliberately. The three causes are alcoholism, of course, or misuse of alcohol, uh, fatty liver disease due to obesity, and viral hepatitis, and it's that that I want to refer to today. The EPC virus, HCV, uh, is a fairly recently identified virus. It used to be known as non-A, non-B, and then in 1989 it was identified. It's more infectious than the HIV virus, and I'm always trying to get through to the government that HCV is now a bigger problem than HIV by far. Now, that might surprise some of you, but that is a fact, in my opinion. And the HCV virus also mutates uh, uh, quite rapidly. Now, the red line shows the increase uh, in the... These are liver deaths, increase in liver deaths in the United Kingdom, the red line. And the blue line shows that we are contrary to the rest of Europe. Whereas in the rest of Europe, deaths are coming down. In Britain, they're going up. And these are some predi predictions. You can see that we are predicting increases in uh, HCV, related cirrhosis of the liver, and we're predicting that those are the yellow blocks, the increase in cancer of the liver, which is the ultimate uh, end point of this journey. So this is a really serious problem if those two slides illustrate that fact. Um, who's at risk? Well, haemophiliacs. Uh, I have a constituent who's had to have a liver transplant and campaigns now for uh, those who receive contaminated blood in earlier years to receive compensation. I've just seen Gillian Murren again, the uh, minister on that. About 2,000 to 3,000 people estimated to be affected. Uh, of course, injecting drug users, particularly those who share paraphernalia such as syringes, but other paraphernalia as well. Anyone in contact with blood from the above groups and it is really easy to pick up this uh, HCV virus. It, it, it will last in blood for several weeks, in dried blood. So it's not just uh, new, fresh blood. You can pick it up from dried blood as well. And, of course, heavy drinkers are subjected to a double whammy because they have the alcohol and they have the virus, both dangerous to the liver. Up to about 500,000 people could be affected, I choose my word carefully, could be affected in England and Wales. We just don't know what the final figure will be. In fact, I don't think we'll ever know. And in the world, it is a significant problem, more significant in some countries than it is in Britain. 17 million people estimated to be affected throughout the world. So it, this is a really serious disease. Um, th there's more spent by the Health Protection Agency uh, on HIV surveillance than on HCV surveillance, which makes the point I made a few minutes ago. And you can see the figures there, significantly more uh, survey, surveying uh, HIV than HCV. And uh, however you ma measure uh, people coming into the health service, whether it's episodes, episodes per person, uh, number of people diagnose number of people in treatment, the, the curves are all significantly upwards, and I don't think anybody can deny that. And there is a cost-effective combination therapy available. It's uh, ribavarin and pegylated alpha interferon, which is a slow-release form of alpha interferon. It's, those people I talk to who have the treatment say it's not a nice treatment, 
but it is curative in a large number of people, not completely curative in all people. It depends, of course, when you're diagnosed. And I'm trying to persuade the government to offer voluntary diagnostic services to anyone who wants to be uh, tested for viral hepatitis, not just C, but B as well and others. I think we've got up to hepatitis E now, by the way. Uh, it is fairly costly to treat people. Uh, I think that 8,000 figure might be out of date. Uh, but, of course, livers are in very short supply, and the cost of a liver transplant, if that's what you have to have because of hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver, is much, much greater. And sadly, of course, many people are dying unnecessarily, A, because they've not been diagnosed, B, because if they have, they haven't got into treatment, and C, uh, when they've gone too far down the health deterioration process, sadly, uh, there aren't always livers available. This shows a, a regional uh, touch on, on the prevalent population that has been treated by region, uh, and the northwest, where we are at the moment, is not the best of areas. You can see that the best areas are London, the northeast, and the southwest, and the England average is in the red box there. So that bar, sh bar chart shows that we could do a lot better here in the northwest of England. And the sad thing is that more people are being diagnosed, more people are catching the virus, far more people are catching the virus than we are treating it. And that is why I use the word time bomb. We haven't seen the worst in terms of health provision yet uh, over hepatitis C. At some stage in the future, if we don't get to grips with this now, the health service is going to be inundated with people diagnosed, wanting treatment, and wanting liver transplants.